Hi everyone. Um, sorry, we just had a, had a, a drink. I didn't realise we'd gone over quite so much. So thank you for patiently waiting for us. Right, we're just going to look at um, really sort of indices and some commodities. And as a matter of fact, let me just pull this up because it's actually quite nice. I had a quick look on financial juice. Um, here we are. Like FJ, yeah, they're, they're great. They, they really do this little wrap now. Um, and what they've also started to do at the, at the bottom, which is really helpful, is whenever they have a, um, an, a piece of news or something, they actually they actually put this, well, as I said, this cross-market uh, impact that uh, this uh, item of news can have. They actually put, well, this is what could possibly um, uh, you know, affect, as it were. So it's, uh, I mean, I think Anime has done a really nice, nice thing with this uh, uh, news feed. And as I say, compared with some news feeds, it's, it's actually very, very competitively priced. Right here we are. They they say futures are steady. Well, not going anywhere at the moment. Uh, crude oil. Uh, David and I have been bullish on crude oil for uh, some time. In fact, it's quite funny. I think two posts ago on my site. I think it's on my site. I think three three weeks ago, we kind of said, well, you know, at the time, this is where it's going. It's probably going to get to 70, 75, 70. I got a very inflammatory um, email from someone. What do you know? What are you talking about? It's just using VPA, it's going to $47. I said, well, okay. And I, we went back and I said, that's fine. Hey, as a trader, you know, you can everybody has a view you know your your view and it could well get down to 47 and but at the moment what the chart is saying it's not at the moment possibly you know whenever uh, but basically it just gives a nice roundup this is explains what happened for those of you who were in the forex why the uh, aussie went up and in fact i hadn't quite appreciated with the new zealand that's actually roared up because there's speculation that their interest rates will be raised uh, later this year rather than waiting so you know two different stories had the same outcome with uh, uh, with regard to the currencies right what do we have here? In fact, let me just go back to a quick thing on here in case you've just joined us. Um, flat, flat. We talked about volatility. You've really got to keep an eye on the VIX, no matter what you what you trade, because the VIX kind of sets the tone for the market in the sense that is it is it risk on? Is it risk off? Is there, um, you know, is it just complacent? And when it's down at these numbers, and going towards uh, the tens and the single figures made, it also impacts other markets. OK, we've had a nice move in in uh, in the oil price. The oil price, with it rising as well so strongly, will also have a huge impact in in the stock market, because obviously if transportation costs go up, then, you know, it affects the bottom line. We talked about how interest rates impact companies you know it's the cost of money so we look at the at the bond market but if the oil price starts to go up exponentially then that is also you 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 get a point in markets with these um with these uh, uh the, the four capital markets and also the the individual instruments within the markets you kind of get an inflection point you know that they, they will carry on doing what they're supposed to do a diverging if you like you know the oil price can can uh, or moving in the same direction you can get the oil price going up you can get stocks going up but there comes a point when you know people say oh hold on well if the oil price carries on much further it's got to have an impact on you know it's just no matter what the fed does or what the fed says if the cost of your business is going to go you know it's going to skyrocket not just possibly because of interest rates but because your the you know your transportation cost is going to you've got to raise price you've got you know everything's got has a consequence and you will get that inflection and we will get if oil prices carry on rising they, the oil prices act as two ways. They act as a as an indication of growth because obviously things are moving. But they also act as a, as a kind of break when um, you know they've gone too far and things are going to maybe slow down. Right. The indices. The Nasdaq is the most interesting. Obviously, yesterday was uh, was the fourth. Uh, was uh, the wasn't the fourth. It was the fifth, but it was the holiday. And this is what it's done so far. Absolutely nothing. And we look at the small caps as well. Uh, nothing at all. So 
how does that translate into the actual charts? Well, this is the um, this is the uh, uh, this is the derivative of, of the YM. What have we got? We've got sort of uh, we get anomalies, but we also need to see sort of volume going in as well. You've you've got a different ways of looking at a kind of top. You've either got masses of volume, narrow spreads, or it's drifting higher, but the volume is kind of falling away. That sort of lack of interest, as it were. There's nothing there so far to suggest that you know is it going to sort of come crashing down, as it were. This hasn't gone back to test the all-time high. It's one of the ones that you know, unlike the S and P and the Nasdaq. So it's definitely one to watch but if from a and what you also have to you say well look at that volume there that reflects yesterday so as i said you have to see it in context but it is still bullish in the sense that it's you know since the pull away from the volume point of control but if you're down you know in the in the um on on the faster time frames that is obviously translating at the moment like this uh and you just Read this chart. I mean, it's you know a lot of congestion. As I said, when you've got low volatility, you've got narrow spreads. You're going to get a lot of congestion, a lot of fake outs, and it's maybe you think, well, do you know what? You just got to wait. And either if you have the opportunity to go and trade, maybe uh, something else on this platform that you have on MT on MT4, then I would suggest you do until this actually starts to get a shift on and you can see on the um on the renko the, this is the renko for this uh, for the ym and you would say yeah you would look at it exactly the way we looked at it with the uh, uh with the forex you look at the price action on the time chart you also look at these levels that are being broken at the moment the, th the third level is really important is that going to offer an you know a nice breakaway you go to the time chart, then you look at the hourly chart. Well, where is it? It's actually trading between what we call the R1 and the S1, which is like a neutral zone. It's it's a zone that is, you know, it, it's a buffer zone. There's there's a lack there's a lack of direction, and we know why there is a lack of a direction. So can I pass over to you, David? Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. I just want to pass over to David. As I said, I also have, uh, you know, you have everything here on MT4. I've got my gold. The gold took a bit of a, a, a dive and it's it's actually quite nice. It's, it had a very, very sharp uh, 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 sell off. As we can see here, we have volatility on uh, the uh, the daily chart. This is what we can see. Lots of uh, rising volume. There's a big down bar. But then you... This fifth element of VPA straight into uh, the support at uh, the, the volume point of control. So that of itself tells you, you know, is something, you know, other buyers coming in, and they certainly did under this candle here, where I know it's got a wick to to the uh, to the top, but it was supported on. Uh, it didn't um, it didn't actually carry on lower, and then you ha this is the buying that came in, as I said, at the at the VPOC. Always get congestion when you have a big fall. You falling markets have momentum, so they always overshoot much more so than markets going up. So there's overshooting, so you need a lot of volume to kind of stop it, as it were. It's like trying to stop a pipe that's burst, if you like. You've got to really put some effort into it. Then, once that comes in, you need to see a, a period of, of congestion and then a, a possible. So, this is really a nice reversal. On the on on oil, which uh, we were sort of writing about it up here, but it was looking very 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 toppy. Um, it was kind of you know it was trying to ride. The volume really wasn't going in to support the 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 up candles, and in fact it uh, it kind of topped out here at the volume support that we have up here. If we look at the uh, the weekly chart, what the weekly chart can tell us is possibly where this is going to go back to. There's a lot of volume going in under those candles there. As I said, it's uh, it's it's you know it, there is price support coming in um back to the volume point of control so anyway i'll just pass over to david and he'll come he's got some other stuff for you to uh, have a look at if you've got any questions just pop them into the chat box
Hi everyone, uh, just move that out of the way, get the chat box out of the way. I'm actually on copper at the moment. Um, there's a really nice, uh, there's a nice move on copper. Um, let's just start with the daily actually. Um, it's the HD contract, 09 September contract. This is the daily chart and it doesn't matter whether you're on uh, a minute chart, a 15 second chart, an hourly chart, four hour, whatever. VPA applies and the principles are exactly the same. What you're looking for is anomaly, confirmation. Uh, you're looking at spread, spreads narrowing, spreads widening, rising volume with rising market, rising volume with falling markets, uh, support and resistance, et cetera, et cetera. It, it's all, it's the complete package. It's the, the complete enchilada. Um, on the daily chart for copper, we had this just to pull this back, just to show you how how bullish this has been. This has been a tremendous bull run in uh, in, in commodities per se, particularly for copper. Um, it's called Doctor Copper, um, partly because of uh, it, it's a it's a bellwether or considered to be a bellwether for uh, indices for uh, for economic growth because copper is such a widely used um, uh, material for so many different applications in industry that if if copper is being bought strongly and you've got a strong bull run then you know that that is the 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 simple logic is that it it is allied to um economic growth economic expansion because expansion in in, in the economy requires copper in in all its various guises and applications um it's a very it's a very simple um relationship in that sense but like all these relationships, it doesn't always hold true. You know, you can find anomalies for it and everything else. So you've always got to bear these um, these truths in in you know caveat them with with caution. They are not uh, cast in stone. They are not the tablets of of truth for you know market behaviour. Um, they they certainly define elements of it, but you can't rely on them, you know, with absolute rock solid certainty. So please bear it in mind. Um, but that's the run up we've seen in copper. Then you get this anomaly up here at the top, breaking away from the volume point of control. Nice anomaly here, lots of volume going in, but you know, huge wick to the upper body, and it looks pretty weak. And the thing with VPA is is, and I guess it's probably the thing we struggled with when you first start is. When you see things like that, which are clear anomalies, your your instinct is to think, ah, oh, great, okay, I'm going to get in. It's going to roll over the following day, or the next bar is going to be, you know, the start of the price waterfall, and it's going to be a nice straightforward trade. Sometimes it happens like that, but generally speaking, it doesn't. It takes time for these reversals to take effect. It's very unusual to see, you know, a strong hammer candle, lots of volume, and then, you know, the market rockets higher or a, a big shooting star with lots of volume and the market collapses. It does happen. We've seen it in equities. We saw it last year. You see these what we call V-shaped rallies. In other words, you get to a peak and, and instantly sells off or you get to a valley and it instantly rises up the other way. You do see that. We've seen it particularly uh, more so in indices where you get... Um, big changes in 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 fundamentals from the fed things of that nature which trigger these these rapid uh the volatility that causes these rapid uh, moves higher and lower but generally speaking what you tend to see is this sort of type of price behavior you get in it in other words it's an early warning signal it's the signal that the market is starting to look a little bit toppy a little bit weak you know some weakness there the market's had this huge rally Yes, there's some, definitely some selling in there, huge amount of selling. Yes, there is profit taking, um, but yes, the big operators starting to move out of that market. And then we go down into the rally here to, to, to the downside. As I mentioned earlier on in the Forex, when you look at the histogram on the VPOC, you know, these areas here are absolutely key. When you get to these low volume nodes, you expect the market to move through there much more rapidly than if it's coming down to you know big areas like this where it's going to find difficulty in moving through there and if it's going to move through these these big volume areas more quickly then it's going to require a lot of volume and as you can see here the volume is actually falling away on those candles so on the down candles that was fine nice solid down day nice and easy to trade through that particular low volume node but then the selling pressure starts to diminish and it's also diminishing here as well. So in general, what you're looking at across this, this time slice, if you will, is a kind of falling away of the selling pressure. In other words, the red candles, exactly the same way. 
We've got a nice little rally here, but look at the volume. The volume's falling away. So even that rally there is weak. And again, you look at the, as I explained earlier, you look at the context of the candle and the volume. And all things being equal, you know, is this is this what we expect to see? Or does this look a little bit lightweight? And, you know, it looks a little bit lightweight. So, you know, we've got volume coming in today. You can see it down here. This is what's going on at the moment. So that's on the daily. In terms of intraday, we've had a really nice uh, little run to the downside. Let's go up onto the 10 minute here. <clears throat> we had uh, volatility trigger, tons of volumes, what we expect to see into congestion. Nice little candle at the top there. On this occasion, you know, we had pretty much, I mean, that's almost symmetrical arrangement, what we're looking for. But even that, you know, the, the actual rollover takes a little while to develop. So it's always a question of being patient and waiting. But a nice little anomaly there, a little pivot to the upside, you know, and down we go. Again, through this low volume node, we went through there pretty rapidly. We had rising volume here, falling price. You know, that is a classic arrangement. It's a classic um of both price and volume because the not only is the price falling but the spreads are actually widening so we've got wider spreads and we've got rising volume and it's just confirming that that is a nice little price waterfall to the downside market tries to rally here on a little wick there almost the same amount of volume as the previous candle you know it's not looking terribly strong where is this going to go to well the first stopping point of any note is obviously the volume point of control down here at 4.36 so not a huge way to go. Uh, the volume's building pretty rapidly over here, so it's going to struggle down here. So if you were trading this short, then the expectation of anything much happening below this sort of level is very unlikely. Uh, you've got that. You've got a support here. You've got further price-based support here. So you've got a huge uh, number of reasons to expect the market to pause at that level. You know, it's not just going to collapse through there and carry on right the way down here to the bottom. You've got a massive amount of price support and you've also got the volume point of control and you've got this huge wedge of volume. So all of that on this particular time frame, 10 minutes, is going to cause that market to uh, to run into uh, some support issues there and it's not going to just run straight through for you. Just have a quick whiz round on some of the others. Uh, I've got the currency majors around here somewhere. Uh, where are we? Currency futures. There we are. Sorry, not currency majors. Currency futures. Just to see what's going on in terms of the forex futures. Uh, this is on. This is the 6A, the 6B, the 6C. Uh, so remember, on uh, in the futures world, on currencies, they are inverted. They're all against the dollar. So this is not dollar CAD. This is CAD dollar. Uh, this is the 6E euro dollar. 6J. That's yen dollar, not dollar yen, which is why the numbers down here look a bit odd. And over here on the uh, right hand side, we've got uh, the 6N, which is New Zealand dollar. Just refresh that. <clears throat> there we go. Um, and it just gives you a, a very clear view when you're looking at the majors per se, whether you're looking at them in terms of futures, whether you're looking at that in terms of spot. You know, is the sentiment towards the dollar, is it universal? Are we seeing the same sort of price action across the piece or are we seeing any divergence? And it's just a really nice, quick, easy way of doing it. But you can do the same thing on spot. I've got a spot, so I'm just sorry, just tidying these up. They're all gone huge for some reason. Move those up there. There we go. There we go. Nice move on yen dollar. So we're seeing a, a little bit of uh, yen buying going on on there. But do remember, the dollar yen does not work in the same way as the rest of the yen pairs. It works in a completely different way. It's almost isolated from the yen complex. So, you know, don't trade the yen, the dollar yen or the yen dollar and expect it to behave as the other yen currencies behave because it won't because you've got you've got two currencies which are uh, both safe haven, both in and out. And they're on both sides. So it, it and it's one of the currencies we focus on heavily in the uh, Forex program to explain all those various reasons as to why. Just have a quick look round at oil. Very bullish on oil at the moment. Um, I think we said oil potentially, uh, certainly on the slower time frames, going up to around 85. I think we said it was going to struggle about 76, 77 dollars per barrel, which is where it is at the moment. Big injection of volume the other day. This is all around OPEC. Um, there was no particular agreement reached. That they can't agree. They probably agreed on the biscuits, but not around um, supply. 
Um, so, you know, this is what's going on. We had a big injection of volume here. Yes, there was a good degree of selling, but no great surprise, probably a great deal of profit taking in there. We're still moving higher. We're getting up into a low volume region here at the moment. Around 77, it's probably going to congest for a little bit. Um, but if we go down to the weekly and monthly, I won't do it now because it's. I think it's on the post originally. Um, you know, it's looking to go high. We've got a little run lower at the moment. So it's coming off a little bit. So as, you, as an intraday trader, you know, you're trading this. In fact, we've got a nice breakaway here on three minutes. And again, you know, it's patience, patience, patience. You've got to be patient. You've got to wait, wait, wait all the time. If you were looking at this as an opportunity, you know, we're in congestion, we're in congestion. OK, we're starting to bake, we're starting to break. Um, you know, where is your floor going to be? Where is the point at which for me as a trader, I'm looking at a, my comfort level to get into this position and, and go short? It's somewhere around this. Certainly once we've got below this floor on the uh, support and resistance here, this blue dash line, once we've got below that, we've got volume falling away, which is nice. So it should be moving pretty swiftly through there, which it does. Um, and, you know, it, it's just a question of where you get in. Where are you going to put your stop loss? Well, certainly above these two, because these are immensely strong. Uh, around 76.50 a barrel, 76.45. So certainly up here somewhere if it fits your money management rules. Nice move low. You know, it's really developing nicely. We'll just see what that volume comes up. That's on the three minute. Let's have a quick shift over onto the 15 seconds. See what's going on there. It's one of my favorite time frames. Oops, sorry. Let's pull that out a little bit. There we go. Make the candles bigger. Okay, what have we got on 15? Uh, 50, this is 15 second, not 15 minute. Absolute ton of volume coming in. What are we expecting? We've got a volatility trigger. What are we expecting to happen over on our three minute time frame? Well, at the very least, there's going to be some congestion. So, you know, we're not going to be surprised when our three minute time frame comes to a bit of a halt because we've seen it reflected here. Now, bear in mind, a 15 second time horizon does not carry as much weight as a one minute or as a three minute. So if we go down onto the one minute, see if we've got volatility on one. No, we haven't. OK, let's go on to one. There we go. But what we have got on one is obviously some clear buying. Heaps of volume coming in. Nice wick to the lower body. Does this mean this is going, as I was saying earlier, are we going to see a V-shaped rally here and it's just going to ping all the way back up to 76.45 a barrel? I can't tell you right now, but the probability is not. Um, if it does, fine. But, you know, the fact of the matter is at the very least, as a short trader, short position, this is telling you that there's some buying coming in. So do not be surprised to get some green candles in the next three or four. And that's really what VPA is about. It is about giving you, it's removing the emotional response to this and going, oh my gosh, close out, you know, hit the brakes, dive, dive, we'll get out of this trade and get on to the next one. It stops you doing that because it forces your mind into a logical analysis. You're not panicking. You're looking at it logically. You're saying to yourself, okay, I can see some buying coming in there. I can see the volume. I'm expecting something to happen here. Maybe congestion, maybe a little bit of a rally. You know, let's see what happens. Now that might take four, five, six seconds, but it's enough to stop you making that, you know, clicking that, that sell button or that buy button to close the position. And then you're out. And then maybe this drops further and you sit there looking at it. You think, I should have stayed in. Because that's the mass of trading. The problem with, with I would say, 95% of traders is the reason, not the, the reason they don't make money is not because they don't understand the market or they're not good traders. They don't understand what they're doing. It's the fact that they cannot stay in positions where they have a little bit of profit and they close them out all the time. And that's the reason it is so damaging, because if you do that all the time, all you're doing is assembling a, a, a lot of small losses and a bunch of small profits. And naturally, your account goes backwards or it, it kind of, it just wallows. Um, it may go up a little bit, but generally speaking, it's gonna go down a little bit all the time. So it's generally sliding lower all the time. And that's the danger of it. That's the problem you have. And that's what VPA does for you. And that's what we've tried to incorporate within the Forex education program. Now you might say, well, I'm a stock trader or I'm an index trader. Forex sits at the heart of everything. We have so many stock traders on that program, you wouldn't believe, because they've come to realize that Forex is not some sort of isolated thing that happens over here, a market they're not interested in. They've suddenly come to twig that actually Forex is the hub of everything. It is the hub of sentiment. And the reason it's so important is because when you think about it, if you're transferring assets from, from equities into commodities or from commodities into bonds or whatever it is, you've got to go through cash somewhere or the other. And the Forex market is the cash market. That's what it does. It's the gateway to everything else. 
sorry to labor the point but it, you know it's it's close to my heart it's what i believe in um but just to pick up on this you can see what's happening you know there's a nice little bit of selling out. are we going to see and and what's interesting about that little two candle reversal there is look at the volume it's fallen away so what does that tell you well it tells you it's not terribly strong if this was strong you'd see a decent candle up here somewhere with some rising volume now it doesn't mean that we're not going to see that in due course but at the moment we're not seeing that we've seen another little bit of selling coming in now what we're looking for is this to drop out through the floor here and on down we go through the 76 and, and beyond and below 76 to 75 whatever per barrel go down onto the slower time frames very quick let's go down onto five what are we seeing on five there's no volatility triggers here you know nice nice candle there nice wick decent volume not huge volume is rising all the time in the general rise in volume the general rise in selling trend monitors transition through we've gone into red now supporting that move a little bit of buying coming in on that particular candle getting down to the bottom of the vpoc here so we've got a low volume node here at five but you know we're just waiting for a pause point here at the moment because we've got the volatility over here on uh, on the on the 15 second let's just see where we went in the 15 second haven't gone anywhere yet still trading within the, the spread of that candle which is what we expect to see let me pass back to Anna. Um, I have remembered to turn my microphone on. Right. Um, this is this little bit is going to be quite short. M uh, my fault uh, completely. I um, I've got to um, I've got an appointment and I've completely forgotten about it. So um, we will do a much longer section next week. So uh, I will do as much as I can on the stock bit. But what I'd like to start with, um, in uh, a little while back in the webinar, we were talking about volatility and volatility when it dies down and we're looking at the VIX and how we use the VIX as a kind of um, barometer with what is happening in uh, to market mood, if you like. This is about market mood. This is, you know, how how are, how are the participants feeling? Are they happy? Are they stressed? Are they euphoric? Or are they complacent? And when volatility, when the numbers on the VIX goes down, at the moment it's at 15, not the lowest it's ever been, you know, it's good one, um, then you know the market is very complacent. And there's lots of reasons for that. And I've got some, uh, some stats for you, which I'd like you to absorb because um, it's stats like this which tell us, it tells us an indication of the kind of risk that is out there at the moment. And, some, and a low volatility trading environment has all sorts of problems associated with it. And again, this is something that we will pick up as a topic perhaps in future webinars. This is to give you an indication. Okay. Um, there have been 10 million new brokerage accounts. So you probably heard this. Uh, from new people, retail people coming into trading, which is fantastic. Trading and investing, taking their, you know, taking their own uh, investing and trading decisions, which is great. And that's been because of the virus, and you know about Robinhood and, and Webull, and the trading and uh, has been made a lot, lot easier. Now there, are, there are downsides to that as well. Um, and one of the stats that have come out is to do with the market is that and to do with this complacency um, um, issue is that 70 percent. I don't know where the, the, the statistics come from, but they come from a, for me, they come from a very reputable uh, uh, um, um, source. They are from a big, um, it's not a hedge fund, actually, it's an investment uh, a company in the city of London. 70 percent of retail um uh, investors believe that the market is going to go up it's going to it's still very very bullish because the fed has their back and to an extent they are absolutely right the fed you know it's got enough on its plate with interest rates and employment but you know it's the it's the guardian custodian of um, of the stock market tomorrow we have the fed minutes so we will see how uh, whether that um, confidence is going to be uh, re repaid the question we're asked is are we at the big short are we going to you know is this the big one and the short answer is no does it mean you know when do we think it's uh, potentially going to happen well 
Um, we think for various reasons, it's going to be pushed further down, maybe even to 2022. Does that mean there's not going to be a correction? No, that, because the way the charts look at the moment, it's almost, it's inevitable. We're just waiting for a catalyst. Maybe the Fed minutes tomorrow, who knows? So 70% and what they're doing, they're just buying the dip. So every time that goes down, they buy, every time it goes down, they buy, they just, you know, that's it. And, you know, to be fair, until now, it's been a good a good tactic. 40%, but only 40% of fund managers believe that uh, the markets are going to go up and up and up. And we've seen in other other uh, charts, you know, things can stay overextended a lot longer than you and I can stay um, uh, uh, solvent. But this is the background that the that stocks are moving uh, in. And the what I've got up here is it's called mimistocks.org. I'm not sure if I've showed it before, but essentially what it does, this is because a lot of this, a lot of the price action has been driven through social media, through uh, activist trading, you, you know, GameStop and what have you. But what I've noticed is, is these are, this is the site, it, it, you know, it updates these figures on a regular basis. It's not nothing to do with what you should be looking at to trade, but it simply gives you a flavor because what I've noticed since I've had this up is the number of times stocks have been mentioned has been going down, which is quite interesting. So in, even in the retail space, there's kind of a bit of a pulling back as, as it were. Uh, so it's an interesting, um, you know, uh, um, site to go and visit just to keep abreast of what's going on in the background and i think they also do top penny stocks as well the times as it's, it's mentioned it's we're always talking about stock selection you know what are we looking for um etc etc so keep an eye on what is happening there what i've also done i've managed to find out at last and put together because this is taking me a little while um and I've only discovered it a little while ago. Let me just, here we are, right. A lot of the um, stocks, things like GameStop and, um, and um, others like it, have been driven higher because they have been very, very heavily shorted, very heavily shorted. And the problem with getting information on what's heavily shorted in real time because most of the information out there is actually delayed you know it goes back maybe two or three weeks um if you if one of your tactics is to find heavily shortage stocks to see whether there's going to be a short squeeze and to go and investigate further is i suggest strongly that you follow this guy he's a super guy i think i've mentioned him before but he bears mentioning again Ihor Duzanivsky, and what he does, it's a, it's a this is free. He has a paid service, but it's quite a, his free stuff is fantastic. If you want to go and see, you know, what is being, you know, what are the, the shorts are going on at the moment. But I have to tell you, there aren't an awful lot of shorts out there because everything is long. Everyone is long this market, and this is, a, you know, we have this very unbalanced market. There's no healthy short and long opinion. Everybody's piling into, you know, long, long as, as it were. But there are still things that are being shorted at the moment, and he just gives, uh, you know, a, what it is, the shares, the shorted, the size of the floats, uh, and also obviously there's a fee, but it's not for saying, oh, go and short these stocks. It may be that one of these will be subject to a short squeeze. So go and check them out. And, uh, and you know, maybe, you know, there may be a buying opportunity because if there is a short squeeze, it's pretty, pretty vicious and it will go up really, really, you know, it will go up really, really quickly. I have, as I said, because of time constraints, I haven't had time. But what I'll do is next time is I will um, keep an eye on, on the ones he comes up with. He normally updates them once a week or so. And I'll pick out some and we will have a look at them from the perspective of VPA. What I'm also um, suggesting is, as I said, what I've been searching for for some time, and I think I've managed to sort it out, if you just bear with me a second, is looking at um, sectors. We've looked at sectors before, and it was really to find 
the thing is with sectors, we can find out lots of you know general information about uh, sectors and what's going up and what's going down. But what I needed to find was what were the 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 stocks within the sectors that were moving and not moving. And of course now they've um, they've disappeared. So if you bear with me, David, can I just pass over to you for two yeah. seconds? Is that okay? Because I need to find it's with bar chart and it's free, but it's really, really interesting because it actually confirms what I was saying that there is everything is skewed to the long side, but it's a really interesting uh, uh, free resource which you might like to um, investigate. And then I'm going to have a look at one of my fallen angels, which is Fuel Cell which has a huge um, percentage of shorts and it's, they seem to be winning the day, but we'll see what's going on with that. And also the one that I've been following, which is BTX. So I'll just pass to David for a second. That's the move that we've got on gold at the moment, which it looks quite nice. Lots of volume as we can see under here. As I said, you can look at a chart in whatever, you know, gold or, and you just look at the chart, you look at the price, you look at the volume, you look at the levels, where's it going? Oh, here we are on the hour. Oh, yeah, fine. In a way, David and I, you know, it's, we obviously have to have the background to what we're looking at. But in terms of pure VPA, it's all there, basically. Hopefully you can see my screen and I'll, uh, this time I'll switch my microphone on because I was rabbiting on with the microphone switched off, which is um, a fairly common occurrence. Apologies. Uh, it's all gone in the ether now. Um, and this, I've just stuck with oil, just going back to the oil chart, because this really does make the point I was making earlier on about the fact that if you get out too early, then, you know, you're going to miss the bulk of the move. And it's exactly what's happened. Uh, I forget where we were exactly, but I, we were certainly above $76 a barrel. I've got a feeling we were up here somewhere. Um, and then you have this lovely move and it just crashed through 76 down to uh, where are we 76 uh, 75 75 odd 76 and then what do we get this is the time to get out i have said this so many times till i'm blue in the face i hope people actually sit up and take notice if you've got a decent position and you've got some decent profit in it then you get a, if you get a volatility trigger on one of your primary time frames close out get out it doesn't matter because you do not want to sit through one of two things, either congestion or reversal. End of story. If the market carries on crashing lower, fine. You can jump back in again once it's cleared the volatility candle. But if you have a good position and you would have had one here, and it just makes the point, you know, if you're sat up here and you closed out on this, this congestion phase up here somewhere and you've lost all that, that's your regret. That is trade of regret. And once again, you would have closed out with a small profit. Um, and, you know, it's it just that is the, the hardest thing to do in trading is to stay in a position through a congestion once you've got a bit of profit and not to uh, have that knee jerk reaction. Close out. I'm frightened. I'm scared. I want to hang on to my profit because I've taken so many small losses. I need some profit in the bank. It's a natural reaction. We all suffer it. It is the hardest thing to do in trading. And that's why we developed the trend monitor, as I said earlier on. But when you get one of these close out at the very um at the very worst if you're scaling out leave one on if you must but i would generally say i would say 99 times out of 100 if i've got a, a profitable position and i get a volatility trigger that's it i'm out simple as that there's no debate no question you can see the volume here and the other aspect to it is you know not only do we get the volatility trigger it's confirmed with this ton of volume so you know the market makers the big operators are in there they are going to be playing Volatility is hugely profitable for them because it triggers the fear of, uh, of all those sorts of fears. And a lot of traders will be jumping in. All the Johnny come lately who didn't get into this will see this price collapsing and they, it's a fear of missing out. They'll all be jumping in here and now they'll all be sitting there regretting it, thinking, oh, it's reversed against me. Why has it done that? Well, you can see why, because there's a volatility trigger on there. And you've got a volatility trigger on 15, even more significant. We hit the volume point of control, which I mentioned. You know, it's come down off the volume point of control. What are we expecting? At the very least, congestion, possibly a reversal, but at the very least, some congestion. So, do you want to sit through that? No. There we are on five minute, another volatility trigger, tons of volume coming in. 
it's so simple when you see this sort of stuff. It really, really is straightforward. You get out, that's it. We're going to sit tight now, see what happens. If the market carries on lower and breaks down to 76.70, uh, or you set yourself another level, maybe beyond that, maybe down to 60, maybe, you jump back in again. But for the time being, we're out of that one, moving on to something else, find something else to trade, and so on and on we go. Are you, did you find it where you look? No. Nope. Anna can't find what she's looking for. We will find that, we will pick that up next time. Apologies for that. Um, we overran on Forex, so you know we're, we're running into uh, one o'clock now uh, because we have to run. We have an appointment at two, so we do have to finish on time today. Otherwise, we would carry on for a bit longer. So apologies for that. Um, just to wrap up, let me quickly run through. Let's just see where we are with things. Um, this is where we are with the indices. This is the YM, the NQ, and the ES. Absolutely paper thin. You can hardly see that uh, price action there. Uh, YM's down a little bit, NQ's up a little bit, and ES is flat. So you can see it up here on the five minutes. You know, not exactly a great deal going on in terms of indices at the moment, but you know, it may shape up later on in the day. Very quickly back to, uh, I think this is where I had my microphone turned off, so I'll just go back over very quickly into gold. Nice to see that rallying. That's on the daily chart. We had a lot of volatility around the VPOC, sorry, a lot of uh, congestion around the VPOC. It held, it's what we're expecting it to do. And partly because we had this very strong price-based um, platform of support, this blue dash line on the accumulation distribution indicator. And remember with the indicator, um, this also works in exactly the same way on TradingView. I'm not sure I've got one on TradingView up, but anyway, um, it does work in exactly the same way. In other words, these levels are not levels I've put on. They are levels generated automatically by the indicator. So they thicken according to the strength. So the wider they are, the stronger they are. It's very simple. And it's just a very visual way of, of seeing things. And the indicator does it automatically. So every time it's tested, it thickens and becomes either a strong level of support or a strong level of resistance. We had exactly the same here. We had resistance here. We've actually got a cluster of two. You might not be able to see them, but they are there, I can assure you. So that was... that. This channeling around the volume point of control is so important because then we're waiting for those levels to be breached. Are we going to see a break to the downside or are we going to see a move to the upside? I'm delighted to say we're seeing a move to the upside, which is what we expect to see with gold. We'll see how the volume shapes up uh, later on today. Obviously, what we're looking for is a nice solid close of that candle with some good supporting volume. And then it's got to battle its way all the way up through here. So through this region, from you know 20 through to 1860 per ounce or 1840 per ounce you know that shouldn't be too bad then we get a little low volume node here which is fine once it gets up to 1860 per ounce it's going to be a lot harder because it's got to get through all this lot we've got quite a bit of, of price-based congestion up there as well so it's going to take much more volume to actually drive through this so in terms of what we should see over the next few days if, it, if the volume down is supportive of today's price action Getting through here will be relatively straightforward, so another sort of $20 an ounce to go there. Nice little uh, pip through there on that low volume node, and then it will start to grind, and it will start to probably to run into you know, more serious price action. Spreads might narrow, might start to see this sort of arcing over here, moving into congestion again uh, as we move back towards potentially $1,900 per ounce in the longer term. And the same is true of silver, exactly the same. Gold and silver, they don't mirror one and one another exactly, but they do tend to move in the same sort of orbit. Daily chart there, there we go. Volume point of control. Again, these lovely levels above and below. Um, and that's the beauty of, of a congestion around the volume point of control. You get these lovely levels developed for you on the accumulation distribution indicator, which gives you platform support, ceiling of resistance, but also great places, you know, you stop loss under here. You've got so much protection ahead of you. If, if there is any reversal back down, if you're going long on this particular market, you know, you've got this great wedge of stuff here, two levels there, the volume point of control, tons of volume, you know, 26 different reasons to 
to see that uh, you know any reversal will protect your stop loss if it's placed below that region. Same with silver, similar sort of um, outcome, up to $27 an ounce, got nice low volume node here, so we should move through that fairly easily. $27.50 should be a reasonably straight run as well. Then we start to hit problems once we get into the $27.80 per ounce and up to $28 and beyond. If we can get out the other side at $28.50, then you know should be home and free up into low volume and on up to $30 an ounce, but we will see in the longer term. I've got soft commodities and all sorts of other things on here, but we are literally running out of time. So I am going to just pop that up full size. There we are. Just to point in the direction of all the bits and pieces. Um, this is the, uh, the Forex education program. And I have to stress, yes, it is Forex centric, if you will. But if you are trading any other market, it is absolutely critical to understanding how all these markets interrelate. There's a huge amount of, of really generic trading experience and knowledge gone into this course as well. It doesn't matter what you're trading. And of course, there's a huge deep dive into uh, the VPA, volume price analysis module. Uh, you've got relational analysis, which talks about as, it, as you would expect. That's the VPA deep dive. You've got the mechanics of trading huge module on fundamental analysis and fundamental analysis applies to all markets again it's not just forex specific you have to understand it applies to everything it's all about sentiment about economy economic growth all that sort of stuff is in there uh, and then this massive amount of uh, these webinars down here as well pulling all together how to use the indicators vpa chart examples topic webinars in total i think there are something like 450 odd lessons in there uh, and, and hours wise, I think there's 250 to 300 hours of video. So it's a massive program. It took Anna and I two years to put this together um, because we wanted to incorporate everything we thought you should know as a trader. Gosh, got the, the opening bell just gone off in my ear. Um, everything that you should know as a trader to trade this market with confidence, but also to understand how all these markets interrelate. And a lot of our traders, they may start with Forex, but actually they tend to migrate a lot. Once they've learned that, they tend to migrate into trading index futures or they're trading commodities or they're trading stocks, all sorts of things. This is the funded Forex program that Anna mentioned. It sits alongside. We're very proud of it. I bolted on. You are basically trading our money. And the reason we added it into the program was, was a very simple reason to give our students the opportunity to trade large sums of money you start with the evaluation level which is down the bottom here uh, with one of these accounts you choose not down to us you decide which level you want to start at five thousand ten thousand fifteen thousand there is a cost of entry that's it that's all you ever ever pay there's nothing else you're not going to lose any money because it's our money so there's nothing to lose you're trading our money not yours so if you start with one of these accounts you have a profit target to achieve, a very simple profit target. Yes, of course, there are risk of money management rules because you're trading our money. Um, but they are, you know, we, we have written them in a way that are very much based around what uh, the rules you would be trading if you were um, trading a, a desk in a, in a large bank. And the purpose of the evaluation stage is to, for you to, to, to be, find your consistency if you can be consistent trading a five, ten, or fifteen thousand dollar account, then the world is your oyster because you can move up to any level, any amount of money. You are just rinsing and repeating. You are replicating what you're doing at a lower level. So you start at that level. Once you've achieved that particular target, then we multiply the funds by four. So if you start at fifteen thousand, you go up to sixty thousand. We give you a sixty thousand dollar account to trade. Uh, the evaluation is only on uh, spot forex, so it's a 28 pairs. But once you move up to the portfolio manager level, you get to trade indices. We've added these in recently and also gold. So you can trade other markets as well. And once you get up to that level, then we start to double the account. So from 15,000, you go to 60,000, four times it, and then we double it. So it's 61, 22, 44, 80, right the way up to $2 million. You earn as you go. On the evaluation level, you earn at 30, you get a 35% kickback lump sum of the profit target you achieve. Once it's achieved, you get as a lump sum back. On the uh, the higher levels, on the portfolio manager levels, up to 1 million, you earn monthly and you earn at 50%. And when you get to the 1 million level, we increase that to 60% kickback, which again is paid monthly and it becomes a huge amount of money on a monthly basis, I can assure you. So that's the uh, the funded Forex program. 
In terms of the indicators, you'll find them all here at quantumtrading.com. Um, we are working on other indicators for TradingView. The, uh, this is the one we just I mentioned earlier on. This is the cryptocurrency strength indicator. Fantastic indicator, literally gone live today. If you have the full package, you will get this free of charge because it's just the way we work. If you invest whatever full package you buy, whether it's on TradingView, Ninja, MT45, whatever, if you invest in the full package, it can be either on the easy payment plan or the full uh, price outright. In the future, you receive all indicators free of charge. It's as simple as that. I haven't shown TradeStation, but TradeStation, there's two versions. There's TradeStation Global, which is with uh, the Interactive Brokers account as the data feed. So that's 9.5. That runs on fantastic because you've got the, the all the advantages of trading TradeStation, which is a great charting platform. Uh, being driven by the IB account, a deep disc discount brokerage. Um, and you can trade pretty much any market through interactive brokers if you have one of their accounts. I tell you, it's immensely powerful. It is a little bit more complex. It's not for the well, not for the novice, I can assure you. Um, but trading through the TradeStation uh, feed is great. It's just terrific, just works a breeze. Um, the other um, version of this is TradeStation 10 and above, which is TradeStation Securities. Both of them have radar screen, immensely powerful. I've got it down here. Very quickly show that to you. Pop that full size. There we are. That's radar screen in operation. This is TradeStation 9.5 on TradeStation Global. Um, and obviously, we've got all the other indicators there. Ninja Trader 7.8 and MT4.5. It's one license covers both. So you don't pay anything extra. You just decide. And you can move from one to the other. So you can go from MT4 to MT5 or vice versa. It's your choice. You do that through the quantum trading dashboard. Finally, very quickly, this is Anna's site, AnnaCooling.com. This is where you'll find all the latest uh, analysis, posts, and what have you, and the links to all the various sites. And the books are up here on Amazon, I have to say. They are selling uh, immensely well, and uh, we do receive fantastic feedback all the time. Anna's got hundreds of emails, literally weekly. Um, so we are very humbled by um, the books, I have to say. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed today. Um, enjoy the rest of the trading session. If you do have any questions, always happy to answer those. Just drop us a line, anna at anacooling.com or david at quantumtrading.com. Be happy to help if you have any questions on today or indeed anything else. That's it. We are going to have to run along. Sorry, it's a bit rushed towards the end. Thanks so much for coming along today. I hope you've enjoyed today. Um, the um, yeah, uh, Lola, the um, all these webinars are recorded. They will go up uh, either later today or the following day tomorrow in on Anna's YouTube channel, so you can always find them there. Um, it's just a question of how quickly I can get around to doing them. But generally speaking, they're, in, they're on the same day or the day after. So thank you so much for coming along today. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, look forward to seeing you next week. We will be back then. Enjoy the rest of the week. Stay safe. Look after yourselves. And we will see you soon. Bye for now.